Are you married? I am. I've been married for almost 20 years. Really? And how does your husband feel about you being a preacher? Uh, he, he is my best support. Um, at the church that we were in at the time, he wasn't feeling fed. He was feeling misunderstood by the leadership there. And he decided, and I was a minister on staff at that church. Mm. And so he decided he was going to step away from the church. And uh, it was actually three months after God had called me to pastor the house of his glory. And I hadn't told anyone. And my husband said to me, I'm not joining another church until it's your church. You're my pastor from here on out. And I hadn't even told him that God had called me. Wow. Um, yeah. Amazing. So he's wonderful. And so he's, he's in agreement with you being a pastor. Absolutely. What would you do if he told you, you know what, I realize you, shouldn't, you can't be a pastor, and I, 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 I want you to stop right now. What would you do? I would say you're a pod person. There are aliens for real, and you are not my husband. Because we have had a former friend come into our house, sit on our furniture, and tell us that we were out of order. Oh. And that what I was doing was not of God. I'm like, well, thank God Holy Ghost has wrapped us both in his grace and, and so that we could be gracious towards him in our home yeah. um, and basically say, you know, if, if you want to challenge that, I suggest you challenge that with God himself. So if your husband asked you to step down from doing that, would you? If he did, I would, but I know that I know that I know just as much as I know that Jesus is my Savior, that he won't do that. Uh, do you obey your husband? <laughs> I, I do in the sense that he's not a taskmaster. He's not my um, master or my servant. We are equal partners in our marriage, and he's never given me an order that I needed to obey, but I've never gone against anything that I know that are his wishes and his concerns. Is he the head of you? Absolutely. He's the head of our household. So you will ha how about if he's the head of you? The, the Lord says, the scripture says that he is, the man is the head of the home, the wife, and that, the, and that Christ is the head of the church. So absolutely he's the head. Is he the head of you? Yes, sir. Okay. And so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I know where you're going, but yes, where absolutely. Where am I going? Do you want to make sure that I am not out of order in my household and that I am not out of order as being a female pastor? Are you over, are there men in your church as well? Absolutely. Are you surprised that men would allow you to be over them? No. Why not? Because I believe that there are men that, um, one, they don't believe in uh, the division of men and women in the church and that the scriptures that uh, are ordinarily ascribed to those teachings, um, they understand, especially um, because the men that are in my church, they didn't just start out fresh with me like, oh, I just brought them to the Lord and then brought them into the church and then, you know, Con convinced them that it was okay, but they have all had their own understanding, teaching from outside and elsewhere. My bishop, in fact, um, it, they all have an understanding prior to uh, being under me that allows them to receive me and honor me as their pastor. Do you believe in the order of God? <laughs> Absolutely. And what is that order? That order is that all things be done decently and in order. And I believe that um, those scriptures are for husband and wife, that the woman uh, should listen to the husband and not um, teach her husband. That uh, in the Greek, that word teaching is not to, uh, to emasculate and to control and to dominate her husband. Um, to basically not blast him out in public and be like, you're wrong and you're this and that. The order, as far as church leadership, is gender neutral in the passages in Ephesians chapter 4. Amazing. Um, do you believe in the order of God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman and woman over children? Yes. You do believe that order. 
And so if you believe that order, how is it that you could be over your husband or any man? I'm not over my husband and I'm not over any man. But when they sit under you preaching to them, you're over them. No, they're not. They are learning from me. And um, the interesting thing is that, like I said before, when it says, oh, that a wife shouldn't teach her husband, then uh, the very same man that came into my household and said, well, I believe that you're an anointed teacher. I believe that you're that you're good to be a teacher, and and yet called out that same pa uh, passage as to why I shouldn't be a teacher. And so, if that's true, when you look at Ephesians four and eleven, that says uh, that there are some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, evangelists, and teachers, and you're going to say, well, women shouldn't be pastors, then you're going to exclude that other list that says women shouldn't be teachers, or women shouldn't be evangelists, or women shouldn't be prophets. And the office of a prophet has both, you know, biblically, both prophets and prophetess prophetesses that were called to the office of prophets. So those passages are gender neutral. The, the preacher that... He was like, Mom, what if this man says that Women shouldn't be preachers. I would say, I'm sure that's probably what he's going to say. Right. But, well, thank um, you for coming anyway. That's very, <laughs> a lot of men won't come when they know, especially if they see the show first. So I appreciate it. Um, um, so you agree that the woman did not come from God, right? She was created from his side, from well, the side of man, from the rib. Right. And so if she were created from the man, how can she be his equal? Because she was created from his side, from his rib, right beside, equal. But that doesn't <laughs> make, and that's why he's not equal. Because the man <laughs> came from God, and the woman came from the man. So as Christ is over the man, the man is over the woman. She's subject to him. Look, you and know what? Any man that is subject to a woman, they suffer. Have you noticed that every time a man listens to a woman, he suffers? Wow. No, I haven't noticed that. I, and I'm sure that my husband would disagree with you. I don't think he's suffering. Is he afraid to be honest? <laughs> no. What would you do if he were honest with you? He is honest with me. He is honest with me. He's always honest with me. So what do you think now realizing that the woman did not come I from God? I did not say I think realizing. I've always known that a woman was created from the side of man. So she but, came from man. But, She's but, made in a man's image. But, but. And the man is made in God's <laughs> image, right? God said meat woman is purpose, equal right? to the challenge. You know what her purpose is for the man, I right? know what my purpose is. And what? My purpose is to serve God. No, your purpose is to You're obey. You going to tell me what my purpose is? To did obey. you talk to God and ask him what my purpose is? He told me. Oh, he did? To obey did your husband? Did he also husband? tell you that he called me? To obey did your Did he call you well, and on the phone oh. and say, I called Deidre to be a pastor? But listen. Her purpose is to obey her husband, have babies, watch over his children while he's away. Okay, now you tell me those cook, scriptures. Clean tell and, me those and, scriptures. And be a wife. Because do you know that Proverbs 31 says that a woman is a business owner, that she buys land, and he doesn't even ask her about that land, that she is the manager of her staff, of her servant, that she makes clothes, well, she goes to the marketplace. Well, if she's not married, she better get out of there and work, you know? <laughs> but Proverbs 31 is for the married woman. So it says, he, yeah, meaning that the those spirit. who have overcome mama and returned to the fathers. <laughs> That's nonsense. That's straight out shenanigans and nonsense. Why you say that? I want you to give me chapter and verse where it says that. There will come a day when I return the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children. That doesn't you mean must, that the mothers are the must. ones who cause the division. And this interview was hilarious, but he made some really good points. There should really not be female pastors. Honestly, you know, the woman was created as the weaker vessel, you know, to be subject to a head, you know, which is her husband. But at the end of the day, a woman body is not built for all of that. Like to even be able to withstand the pressure and the decision making behind, like running a whole flock. And this ain't to put women out of their place or anything like that but the woman wasn't created to be the head like the most high he he decided that yahweh yahweh shy husband wife children that's that's just the order of it and all i can say is coming up into in christian churches as a child and an adult wherever there was a female pastor not saying that 
where there was a male pastor, there wasn't confusion, but there was hella confusion in church when there was a female pastor. And I'm just gonna keep it all the way real. But hey, at the end of the day, everybody gotta stand before the most high and uh, give an account for that, what they done and the decisions that they made. It's a part two, so we'll be back for part two.